in the last video we looked at how we change from coordinates of A to coordinates for B for both time coordinates and spatial coordinates and how we convert you know from B back to coordinates for A and we got this weird factor of gamma which is 1 over the square root of 1 minus B squared over C squared so and these these uh, transformations are called Lorentz transformations uh, and, and he was the guy that first came up with the math that allowed this, this, uh, this speed of light to appear constant. And this was actually, I believe, uh, he came up with these equations well before Einstein came up with special relativity. He just saw it as an interesting math trick, but Einstein was the one that realized that, no, this actually happens for light, and this is how, how coordinate transformations actually work between different observers moving at different speeds. So let's see some examples on, on how this actually, uh, what sort of physical effects this actually has. So first there's the idea of time dilation, where a moving clock will run, will appear to run slower than a clock that is, is stationary. So let's draw our axes again. So this is position of A and uh, time of A. And here is the time axis for B. So that's, that's how B is moving. And let's say that as B's clock ticks, there's a certain amount of time, T, we'll call it capital TB, in between each clicking of their of their clock and we're moving along the axis uh, if I'm on the if I'm on B's time axis then its spatial uh, coordinate must be zero so all along this line B says that's at position zero my my spatial position for B is, is going to be zero for that so I have XB equals zero uh, little tb, we're going to say that equals big tb, how fast this clock ticks. And what I want to know is what does, what does A measure this, click, this uh, clock time as? How do I get that? Well, uh, I want to find one of these equations that relates xb, tb, and ta. So that's going to be going to be this one over here. So I get, and I'll do this in yellow, I'm going to get CTA is equal to gamma CTB plus V over C XB. Well, I said that XB is going to be zero, so this term goes away. Uh, the C's here cancel out, and my TB is this capital TB. So TA, the time that a measures for the ticking of their clock is going to equal gamma TB. So if this is measuring seconds, then there's this factor gamma in front of here. And that gamma we saw is equal to 1 over square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. So that's 1 over 1 minus V squared over C squared times TB. And this is the... Uh, this is the, uh, sorry, I'm pausing. Uh, th this is the transformation factor. This is the factor that we saw for our light clock in the time dilation video. This matches our results from there. Okay, so, so that's how these uh, Lorentz transformations show that time dilation uh, is included in these Lorentz transformations. Now let's look at, at length contraction. So, so okay, we had, uh, we had a new axis. So this is XA and this is CTA. You're gonna be, if you do this for long enough, you get really good at drawing these, uh, these space-time diagrams because they're, they're exceedingly helpful. So this is time of B, and this is 
the spatial axis of B. So this is XB. And we're saying I'm going to have uh, two observers in B's frame that are moving at the same speed. Okay, so these guys in B's frame of reference, these are the, these are, uh, the same distance apart always. And let's call this length LB. Okay, so the length between these two observers as measured by B. And it's measured along their position axis. So we have XB is going to equal LB. So we know what the what position B says this is at, but what we want to find is this distance. I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. This distance, and we're going to call that LA. So LA, we don't know what that is, but we do know that if we're measuring along this line, TA has to be zero along this line. So TA is going to equal zero. So which of our Lorentz transformations relates XB, TA, and LA? Uh, well, this would be XA. So we look up here, and this one has an XB, a TA, and an XA. So let's, let's write that one down. So we're going to get uh, XB equals gamma minus V over C times CTA plus XA. So XB is just going to be equal to LB. This time A is going to equal zero, so this whole term goes away. And we're going to get gamma LA, because XA is just equal to, XA is equal to LA. So if we rearrange this, we're going to get LA, the length between these two observers, as measured by A, is going to equal 1 over gamma times LB. And if gamma is this 1 over square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared, then 1 over gamma is just going to give us square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared times LB. So we notice that if LB measures this as 1 meter, then this is going to make that length shrink if A measures it. So this is how we verify the length contraction, uh, the length contraction equation. And it all stems from, from these, uh, these Lorentz transformations, which are required in order to satisfy the, the assumptions and postulates of special relativity, that the speed of light is going to be constant in all frames. Remember, through all of this, the only two things that we have assumed is that the speed of light is constant, uh, is independent of the speed of the source that is emitting the light, which was strongly experimentally uh, verified uh, to as high as, as accurate as the experiments could go, and that there is no preferred inertial reference frame. If you're moving but not accelerating, then you can say that you are at rest and the other person is moving and all of the laws of physics should still, uh, should still apply for you. So those two assumptions gave us, uh, based on those two assumptions, we're able to derive these transformation laws and that's what gives us some of these weird effects like time dilation and length contraction and, and gives us formulas for the, the frequency Doppler shift, uh, the relativistic Doppler shift, and, and the addition of velocities and, and other effects like that. Uh, so hopefully this satisfies the people who want to see the math details and the people who don't like the math details can avoid this, this uh, part of the lecture series like the plague.